All right, I'm here with Asa, right, and Brian Frias. Both of them are cops, um, high elite cops, like I would say like black belt cops. <laughs> 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 Brian, tell a little bit about your experience. I know you came for my, uh, you came at my first uh, podcast, right? The very first one I did with Brian. But tell me a little bit about you just for those who doesn't know you yet. Yeah, so I guess it's been almost a year since we did the first one because everything shut down, so it was a pretty long It was long before time, the shutdown? Huh? I, no, I think it was during the shutdown. Yeah. We had to but why did they begin? do it in secret, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but at the beginning. So it's been a while. Now things are opening. We can chat and hang out again. And, yeah. And uh, we don't have to pretend like no one sees each other. So yeah, it's not in secret anymore. <laughs> but uh, we forgot uh, our mask. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't have our mask. Oh, no. We're all going to die. So uh, I, I, like I said in the first one, I was in the military for a little while. And then yeah. uh, got out and moved here, started training with you guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was like, man, like 2011. Yeah, Brian is my black belt. So. Yeah, 2011, something like that. You started training with me when you were blue or purple? Purple. Purple, yeah. Yeah. And then stayed here that whole time. Yeah. And uh, then became a cop. And so you went to Afghanistan? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the Iraq game and got the t-shirt there and then went to Afghanistan uh -huh. and, and uh, came back. Now we just do the cop life. And, okay. uh, and I... I thought our academy wasn't too bad as far as the defensive uh -huh. stuff goes. Cause you, uh, I mean, even if, uh, even if you don't get great training and I'm not saying it wasn't good training, but even if yeah. you didn't get good training, training mm -hmm. once a week is better than nothing. Yeah, but yeah. after the academy, there's no requirement to have cops continue training. So a lot mm -hmm. of guys just stop after that. Yeah. That was so frustrating to me. Coming, yeah, because yeah, you guys not allowed to train right during the quarantine. Yeah, yeah, definitely was, during the quarantine, and then on your own, there's no you cannot train during yeah, work and course. stuff like that. Yeah. So I was I was really frustrated with that and trying to figure out how can I make more cops train. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that jujitsu is a, a big part of the solution to all these these cop problems yeah, that we yeah. have. We gotta know? talk about this. Later. It's a Tell me a little bit about you. Like, what is your background? Like, when did you start, you know, uh, in the did you join the military as I well? did. I was in the Marines as well. Mm -hmm. um, I came to police work a little later in life. I think I was 31 when I went to the police academy. Mm -hmm. um, and that was 10 years ago. Uh, wow. and I, so, yeah, I've been a cop for almost 10 years now. Wow. Um, and uh, I came to jujitsu a little later in life uh, than Brian did, for sure. I've been training. You're blue belt right now, right? Eh? Uh, yeah, I've yeah. been training for a little over two years. Nice. Um, it's been a really good, good experience. Uh, similar to Brian, I went through the police academy, and also, like, like you said, the training was good. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of my background is in firearms, mm -hmm. so to me, that's what I focused on in the academy was the firearms portion. And again. It's better than nothing it was good it was once a week and we shot and, and i've had a chance to train with a lot of different agencies around the country mm -hmm. uh and our firearms program is probably up there it's i know like, you're really you're into one. like knives and stuff as well right yeah i like i like weapons yeah in like general them. yeah and i like tools <laughs> yeah i'm a tool user i got a thumb <laughs> yeah. um yeah i came and then i came to jujitsu a little later uh -huh. as a solution and uh yeah i definitely am a believer that why did you join jujitsu so I was actually taking a class. Uh, uh -huh. It's a class that me and Brian have done together now. I've done it a few times. Uh, mm -hmm. It's ECQC with Craig Douglas. And uh, where, where in Vegas? It was this in one, the one I went, the first one I went to was in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, and uh, it's a great class. It's a, the, the shortest way to describe it is is it's an in fight weapons access uh, class. So what mm -hmm. happens when there's a, a fight? And essentially, we're talking about a clinch. Yeah. And then how do we get a weapon in that fight? Yeah. And um, I went into it. I mean, you know, I. I spent most of my adult life doing doing violent stuff, right? Yeah. So I felt comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I got one of the things we do in that class is you do he calls them evolutions, and it's essentially a sparring match, but it has training weapons involved. Mm. And I got paired up with a guy who was probably about ten years older than me, and he was fit. And I didn't. He was a brown belt in some martial art, but I didn't know what that meant. I was like, whatever, you're a brown belt. That's cool. I'm a boxer. Let's play. 
Uh, and he absolutely embarrassed me. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a good training environment. He controls you with one arm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah no, 100%. No hands. 100%. The, the, he was a jiu-jitsu brown belt. He was a jiu-jitsu brown belt. Uh, and he absolutely. Jiu-jitsu like, brown belt, he's like. Ah. Yeah. I mean, it's like magic, right? I was, yeah, I, I, I was like, I was like, what what just happened? Like, how did I just get? Yeah. I mean, so you do two two matches. He choke you or one. control you? No, or? I didn't even. Um, the, the way that this particular scenario is set up is that one of the two people in the match is on their back. Uh, with a gun, with a training gun, and the yeah. other guy's standing with no gun. And so uh, I think I started with the gun, and he, in my mind, I had no training, I had no, no grappling training. So what mm-hmm. I saw was he just tossed my feet out of the way and jumped on top of me, took my gun, and shot me with it. So, wow. right, what, what he did was is he, he wow. like passed my guard, got me inside control, <laughs> right? I mean, now I know that, but at the yeah. time, I didn't yeah. know that. So it's witchcraft. So yeah, yeah. It, was, it was magic, right? It was like, yeah. just, but, but I was thinking, Okay, well, you know, I'm a I'm an adult semi muscular man. I will do the yeah. same thing when it's my turn. Yeah. And I didn't. He wrapped me up in some sort of sweep, tipped me over, pulled his gun out, and shot me. Wow. So it was a, it was a it was a big moment for me after that class. I was thinking, I was like, man, I got murdered twice. Wow, <laughs> like that's that's terrible. What on is top that? and on bottom? Yeah, both, with the like, gun, we're, yeah, the gun. With, that, with the gun, without the gun, top and bottom. There's no, I was like, what 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 sorcery is this? So oh, wow. uh, the instructor Craig was like, yeah. So you know, he's like. Uh, you know th- that that class brings a lot of disciplines together. It brings mm-hmm. you know the the verbal, the social and verbal aspect of violence. How we talk, you know, entering into it. Yeah. Um, obviously the firearms, but then also the grappling. How many people were in this? This like I would say seminar, right? It's kind of like yeah, a seminar. Like, uh, 20, like 20, 20, 20 people. 21 yeah. students. That it's restrict one. like for a certain amount of people. Or yeah, he usually tries to keep it around yeah. 20 or so 21. Keep the quality. Huh? Yep. yep. Yeah. The three At, days. Two and three and three days. Like, what, like three hours each. No, it's a long oh, no. day. It's like really? all like day two long? ten hour days at wow. least, and then a half day. Yeah. It Man. starts well, at least the one that I did was started with a half day, mm. and then two ten hour days. I'm sure wow. he tailors it as needed or requested, but it, it's a it's a long weekend. But man, it was a lot of fun. It's, it's a great class. I've Man. done it three times now, and I'm going to do it again in August. Um, it's gonna be where in the near the one I'm doing in August is in South Dakota. Wow, so. and, and it's open for everyone, or it's just like he teaches like law enforcement only classes, but he also teaches open enrollment classes. Oh, wow. that's um, awesome. He 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 uh, he runs a lot of different classes, but yeah. the the sort of the flagship course ECQC mm-hmm. yeah. is generally an open enrollment. And that's class. what that's what we're trying to do here at Atos headquarters. Like we had a couple seminars. We have like two seminars with Brian, um, and it was like very basic stuff, you know. But I want to keep doing more and more and more. So you guys can teach like people how to uh, behave, you know, in a weapon scenario, you know. And there's so many things that I learned, you know, even like in those like basic days, you know. So it helped me a lot, and uh, I believe that can help and solve a lot of problems, you know. And you never know; you gotta be ready, right? And as a cop, for example, um, you're you're a cop. You went to this course, and you get out there. And you felt like humble. It humbles you, oh, yeah. right? It humbles you. That's the word. But I feel like uh, there's a lot of people who get in the same situation as you. Like maybe they don't have any martial art back- background. And then let's say they fought that guy, the brown belt or the purple belt. And then the guy like just control them and toss them all over and let them do anything. And then even though like they feel that way, they still not join jiu-jitsu. They still like have the ego to not <laughs> sign up for a jiu-jitsu class, right? Oh yeah. I think the big problem uh, of the cops' problems <laughs> are the ego, most like the ego, right? Ego, ego will definitely. It's a get huge you ego. Killed, you know, yeah, ego will get you killed. It will yeah. get you the complaint. You know, it'll yeah. get you fired at some point. E- yeah. Ego is. Yeah, we your, always like to jump yeah. to the "it'll get you killed," which is the extreme yeah. example, and and it will. It but is, it'll yeah. also ruin your career or ruin like yeah. an opportunity for you because yeah. you get so wrapped up in yeah. in a, I'm not gonna put myself in a situation where I can fail. Yeah. Um, and that was the big takeaway from that class. Other than I need to go get get some jujitsu in my life, but the, my big takeaway from that class was how many classes have I signed up for and have I taken, but there was no opportunity to fail. So if you're just going to a class, whether it's a shooting class or a grappling yeah. class or whatever, and there's never any kind of, I mean, a sparring session is the yeah. obvious one, but if it's shooting, there should be some sort of scored test yeah. where it's not, at the end of the day, I'm not just going to Brian going, hey, we both put holes in the paper, good job, right? There should be some sort of scored test where I can go, hey, we both shot okay, but man, you shot a higher score than me. What do, what do I need to do to get to that point, mm, right? So, yeah, that's like just exchanging knowledge. 
Yeah, I think right. a lot of too, yeah. a, a lot of training courses they'll have some sort of fight for your life scenario or something like that where you're gonna be yeah. tired out and then you fight and uh, you end up winning by design at the end of it and uh, and I always hated that. I remember in the academy we did that and yep. at the end of it I won, not because I was better than them. It's you just won because they at some point let you win. They tell whoever's fighting you like okay. Just let them have it. And I always thought, man, you, it's the wrong, the wrong idea. You, you have mm -hmm. to, you have to kill the guy. Let the guy die, so they know, man. If I don't keep up with this, if I don't get better, that will happen to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't yeah. think enough training the, end with that, with your ability to lose. Yeah. The, you know? the problem with that scenario in the academy is, is they do it once at the end, so it's sort of the only one. So psychologically speaking, they're trying to send people out with the snapshot of I'm a winner, but. What the real answer is is you should be training every mm -hmm. time you go to the mats with yeah. that, with the possibility of losing, yeah. and then you can take those losses away with you and go, okay, what did I, what am I doing where I need to adjust yeah. and get better? Yeah, I would say like for example, those type of classes that you guys go, uh, ten hours, three days, thirty hours, right? Course, it's a lot, but uh, it's not enough. I would say, right? No, like no. it's a, oh, it's no. it's great to like. You, you, of course, it's better to have that 30 hours, you know, than nothing, right? But you got to keep continuing the training after yeah. that. And I feel that I, 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 I think like the cops, like, you know, the majority, I would say, right? Because the videos that you see and all that, it's like <laughs> the majority, like they, they have so much ego that it makes them, okay, I have this 30 hours course, I'll be a cop for the next 15 years, you know, they think like nothing is gonna happen, you know, just go work, go back home, go work, go back home, but you gotta be ready for the worst, right? I and, look at it like you know, uh, every time I go to a class. It's I'm, an everyday training. It's yeah. an audit, right? Yeah, 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 so when I go to a class, it's, mm -hmm. it's a test to mm -hmm. see how I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know? So I look, when I go to the class, I'm looking to pick up one or two new skills, hopefully, maybe maybe more if, if it's a advanced class you have too many you have to start writing them down so you don't forget them but hopefully in a, a day class or a two-day class we went to a, a um, yeah. carbine class a, an AR class a few months ago and uh, it was just a basic course but mm -hmm. I wanted maybe pick up a few tips here and there and then see how I'm doing test how I'm doing and that tells me if my training's going well mm -hmm. what do I need to add to my training yeah. so it's all of those one day courses and stuff i i think of them more as a as an audit like you said as a test so, yeah i mean that's that's a craig douglasism i didn't make that up but yeah uh, he, he yeah. says that he says this is an audit of your skills and like i said that particular class is an interdisciplinary mix of verbal skills shooting skills grappling skills so uh, for that first class i mean one of the best compliments i've ever gotten was in that class from craig but it wasn't about my grappling mm. it was about how i talk and and how i you know composure under pressure mm. he was like yeah that's good you you obviously are calm when you have a gun in your hand that's good that was great but my takeaway from it was i probably don't need to go work on those skills but you see other people in those put in those scenarios and they wind up I mean, committing murder within mm. the scenario because they the verbal friction on them is so great that they just can't they yeah. can't respond and they make a mistake. So yeah. we had a guy that was a he was a purple belt in jujitsu. He was a competitive shooter. Um, he was a very smart guy. I want to say he was like he was uh, some kind of doctor or something like that. Mm. But he just got flustered with people just messing with him, and in, in really? and so he he made a mistake and shot somebody he shouldn't wow. have shot. And that's a good insight. So for him, like. Hey, purple belt in jujitsu is basically, I mean, you're unstoppable against yeah. the average person, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's a great shooter. So, I mean, he's, he's above 90% of the shooters, but maybe he needs to go work on his ability to, and so Craig always Emotion. Says, yeah. And, and it's all about the composure emotion. and yeah, how you, you know, yeah. verbal agility. And so yeah. maybe go work, do a Toastmaster. Because you, you can make a huge mistake. I, I believe like we all make mistakes by emotion, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's emotion, yeah. right? Every, all mistakes we make, like yeah. it's it's because emotion, you know. All all mistakes, you know. Uh, well, human human we, beings like driven by emotion, you know. Yeah. Good and bad emotions. We have good and bad emotions every day. So right now we are emotional. Right now here, like talking, because yeah, this is something that you guys you like, that you guys love. This is something that I like to talk to you about. But you know, like in a situation where we are on the street, and then you very well train, you know. And then you think also like that, you got to have a balance of your emotion, right? Yeah. Like because it's hard. in a situation like this guy, uh, he probably felt like, oh, I'm a purple belt. I'm like over 90%, like a really good 
shooter, you know. Uh, nobody can mess with me, you know. And then, like, he let the words, like, get into his heart, and then, boom, he explode. Or he had a bad day or he had a bad night of sleep. He was stressed, like, for months, you know. And then the situation happens that he couldn't control his emotion. So there is a lot of those facts, you know. And uh, we all make mistakes, you know, through emotions. And, and yeah. I think the psychological aspect uh, in those situations are are very very important as well right you can be very skilled but you gotta have like a good mind as well right yeah so a good mind like, yeah, good talk definitely. you gotta be able to speak well yeah. but when we did those uh the classes we had at the first one had a lot the second one too they had a lot of people come to those but if you remember how many people like yeah. shot when they yeah. they wouldn't have been able to shoot in yeah. real life if that yeah. was a a real life situation yeah. and they it would shot, have been a crime to shoot is what yeah. you mean yeah yeah, yeah. It, he definitely murdered the wrong just person. Committed murder, <laughs> and that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that happens. But that's a good, that's a good experience in a class, right? You want yeah. that experience in the class, not on the street. Yeah. Um, and I think that ability to remain composed under mm -hmm. pressure is key for cops. Yeah, but for for people who doesn't know, for example, when people see like um, a cop like shooting, right? For example, we can talk about that a uh, girl that got a knife mm. a big knife oh yeah and yeah, then like yeah. she, a good one. she was about to like like to stab the other yeah. lady and then the cop like talked to her and then when she was about to stab like she got shot but then like she died mm -hmm. and she was only what like 4 15 16 yeah, years old something, something young, like that young. she was very young uh and man like it was something that people like see just like oh the cop sh killed that woman a child yeah a child yeah. right but like uh, the cops are trained to protect others as well so the last thing the cop wants to do is to shoot someone right yeah absolutely and, and people think like they they no they are there to shoot people no right is the last thing the cop would do yeah. but in that situation he was allowed to to shoot that person yeah like, he was he, the the only way to stop her from doing potentially deadly harm to the mm -hmm. other girl that was yeah. there was to shoot. And what about if he didn't shoot and then she stabbed the other girl, the other girl died? Right. It, it would be the cop's fault as well. That was a, <laughs> that's a no a, win. Right? That was a crazy situation. It's, it's yeah. hard. And, and if you try to put yourself, well, people, they don't know use of force science. They don't know the rules for that situation. Yeah. I don't even know the rules for that area. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. For that year. Each state has different yeah, each, law, every, right? every area is going to be a little different. I don't know yeah. what that cop's experience level is mm -hmm. or what was in his mind when he was going there or what he knew when he was going there. So you're trying to put yourself in, in this guy's shoes without all the pieces to the puzzle, which is already starting off bad. But just taking it from the 30-second the video that I saw, if that was me showing up and uh, you know that there's people fighting you uh, he probably i don't remember but i think he knew that someone had a knife and there's someone being threatened you you see that this person with the knife is about to stab another person you have a split second to decide what to do mm -hmm. and it's kind of like the uh the self-driving car problem they're they're trying to design self-driving cars and uh the car is coming up to a potential accident. It can swerve left and hit a family, or it can swerve right and hit whoever's in this truck. And and so you, the car has to decide who's gonna get hurt. There, It will happen, and someone needs to tell the car how to do that, and it has half a second to do that. So it's a same situation. You show mm -hmm. up, do I Shoot. hope that this person who's about to stab the other person is actually the bad guy? Or is the other person who's about to get stabbed the bad guy? Mm -hmm. You don't always know. Yeah. When people call, they don't always tell the truth or they tell some of the truth. I think um, one mm -hmm. of the things I always say to even the people on the street is there's your side and their side and somewhere in between is a mix of what actually is happening. Mm -hmm. And in our small, short time interaction, we got to try and decipher what that, is, what so that actually is. This is so hard. Yeah. And then so you hard. get all the people who say, you know, uh, shoot the knife out of their hand yeah. or, or oh, whatever, yeah. you know. Or like, like a taser. Yeah, you, yeah. Use the use taser. taser. My, but my the taser is not a very effective, right? Sometimes no, it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, I have like a 50%. 50%. Yeah, sometimes oh, it's wow. worked and sometimes it's... Even if you <laughs> aim and you got it. Yeah, I, I was... Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, huh? Yeah. I've also, the times I've seen it yeah. fail, it's been catastrophic. It has Really? Been, well, in the sense that uh, once you've 
pick the tool, you tend to fixate on that tool. Mm. So guys will and there's will fire like it. examples of videos of oh yeah people tons. like trying to use the taser and they end up dying. There are a lot of or lot like of oh not of the no. You mean Let's of, say of the officer? I would guy. say like the officer like tried to use the taser and then they end up getting hurt. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or yes, like yes, they happens. use that the happens. taser and then someone else get hurt. Sure. Sure. Right? Yeah, if, yeah. Well, if it's if it's ineffective now, you have this thing in your hand that didn't work. Um, mm. And a lot of the, I mean, to be fair to to the taser as a tool, a lot of the reason it doesn't work is user error. But there's a lot of ways to use it incorrectly, and by incorrectly, I mean miss with it or cant it at the wrong angle or what whatever, not hit the right space, not get the right spacing away. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it, it's a, and we don't. Again, to go back to what Brian was talking about at the beginning, as far as training, you know. That's that's something. If you're gonna use that, we should be training with that all the time. We should be spending a lot, a lot more time. Mm -hmm. But as it is, we maybe practice with it once every eighteen months. Yeah. Well, you have a problem with the <laughs> with the fixation thing. You don't train very often, so you're not comfortable making split second decisions under yeah. a, a really dynamic, stressful environment. You deploy the taser, and in my case, for one of them, I deployed it, and it just bounced off the guy's shirt. I, I don't know; it just landed weird. But then two barbs kind of, they just fell, like hit him and fell. And uh, I was able to drop the taser and then do something else. But not always. Some people will fix it. They have something in their hand. They used it, and it can't. They can't think to let go and start doing something else because they're just focused so heavily on the problem that's in front of them. They're not mm -hmm. making yeah. a good decision on what to do next. Yeah. Which is, I mean, jujitsu is a, a problem solving it's, game. Yeah. You know, I try. I try the arm bar. The arm bar doesn't work. So I pull the arm over. I go to omoplata. And mm. It's always trying to solve a problem. Yeah. It. it it lends well to other aspects, especially in the, the law enforcement job. Yep. The, yeah. the problem solving part of it is huge. It, it answers a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that uh, somebody pointed out to me, I think in a pistol class, but once I saw it, it really applies to jujitsu and, and a lot of these disciplines. So they were talking about shooting a pistol and they were like, I'm not actually gonna, they're really high end shooter. And he's like, I'm mm -hmm. not, essentially think of a black belt with a pistol, right? Yeah. And he's like, I'm, I'm not really gonna teach you anything you haven't heard before. But he's like, the difference between somebody who's a really good shooter and somebody who's a new shooter is the fundamentals applied perfectly. And that mm -hmm. really applies to jujitsu too, right? There isn't like, you're a black belt, I'm a blue belt, but you're not holding out on me like the five finger death punch, like you'll teach mm -hmm. me that when I get my brown belt or anything, right? Like yeah. that's, no, it's, it's just that you, when, when either of us applies any technique, you apply it so much better than I do because you can apply those fundamentals perfectly and I'm still learning what's my base, where am I going, right? So mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's all, it's that decision making. So when you watch a really high end match between two guys, they're just thinking faster. Right, like even if I'm on the sidelines, if I'm watching you two roll, you guys are thinking faster than I can think, and I'm sitting here sipping a yeah. soda, right? And so yeah. that ability to think fast mm -hmm. un, in under stress, yeah, that's doing a cop's job. That's what cops, good cops, do. Why you tired? Think fast, yeah, yeah. While you're tired, while you're getting beat up, yeah. while you're trying to get an arrest, yeah. and like you said, emotion, right? I mean, these yeah. calls don't happen in a vacuum. So mm -hmm. while you're dealing with the fact that you know there's an injured victim, and maybe that's tugging on your heartstrings, maybe there's a baby, maybe whatever it is, whatever your emotional. Yeah you know, string is, that's getting pulled. Yeah. Um, you have to deal with all that. And so the ability that's, that's jujitsu is making decisions quickly mm -hmm. under pressure and, you know, figuring stuff out. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I think it's such a valuable skill for cops mm -hmm. to study. So I would like, like, for example, you guys, um, uh, go and train, you know, uh, Brian trains every day. Um, most of the day, pretty much this guy yeah, just if I'm not training about, here, like, I train, uh, uh at work. <laughs> You got guys coming in and drilling. Ryan's all about this, man. Yeah. This is his lifestyle. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. man. This guy's superhero. You too, man. Thanks so much I'm, for your service. I like nice. Robin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, like, man, like, do you do you see like, uh, in the environment, like there there are like cops that trains, and there are cops that doesn't train, right? Uh, you can tell the difference, right? Yeah. In, oh, in, like, immediately. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's the same as you go with a, it's a guy's first jujitsu day. And yeah. now, you, now you can experience this, right? But it's do you a, think right now cops are training more? Yeah. Or yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, we or probably before they have, didn't train them much or what? I think like, like a, what I is think the, the a, average? What is the percentage? 
Oh, well, you, you can't I'll be generous. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're. What, we what have I mean. a big department too, though. Uh, and I but you guys try to like, hey, let's train, let's train. You it, guys try to yeah, in the ten years yeah. that I've been on, I mean, one of the things that like drew me to Brian was that he's pushing that culture. He wants whatever it is, whether and it's. I mean, obviously, jujitsu is a big part of his thing, but I mean, he's down to go to the range. I've always been a range guy, so I've yeah. always been trying to push people to go to the range and yeah. like, let's go shoot. Let's yeah. shoot this drill. Let's be competitive, whatever. And then so then Brian came along and, and he was doing the same thing, but with jujitsu. And that, and so that's it's created a, an environment where more and more people, you know, so it takes it's organic. It takes time. But people, other cops see it. They see the success. Mm -hmm. They see the like and they're like, OK, so that guy's doing this, this and this. Maybe I should go do this. this yeah. And, and so it's 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 building. And I think that's probably reflected across the country mm -hmm. where we're seeing more and more people start to I mean, y now it's we've heard lots of people say like, oh, a cop should be a blue belt or a cop should be a purple. belt. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's becoming like a, a you're hearing like that a lot more. Often. Yeah. Some states like they, uh, they Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's not they got to be at least blue belt. That's right? that's the proposal. So some I think proposal. he actually trains the guy who proposed it. I just I saw it uh, mm. yesterday scrolling, but yeah. he said by the proposal is by 2023 to have all their cops is is to mandate that they get their blue belt or work towards their blue belt and uh, i thought it was interesting I, i'm not ever going to be against cops training right yeah. but let's say uh blue belt man you gotta go to black <laughs> <laughs> ideally going, you know. right oh, i uh, got a blue belt okay now i'm done Mar marietta no, georgia's got a thing too yeah, where they're tra training. training regularly but let's say you you um you require all your cops to be a blue belt uh, you're going to need a lot of instructors. Yeah. That's a lot of people who are going to need to train. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, in my opinion, if you're training three times a week, every week, two and a half years would be a good time frame to get your yeah. blue belt. I think you'd have a good understanding of the, the principle. But also like, I, I think that the, the, the cops in general, like they need to invest, like join an academy, join yeah. a gym, join a jiu-jitsu facility or MMA facility or grappling facility, like join an academy. And then, you know, it's like oh, 150, 200 dollars a month in California. You know, they're gonna be like, oh, it's like 2,400 a year. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of money. Yeah. I saw, I saw a meme like a uh, meme. It was like a, it was, a it was like a, 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 a car, like a big, big truck with like big wheels. You know, like super fa yeah. fancy car, like cops car. You know, like cops like uh, love those yeah, trucks, right? And then like they have stickers. And all then over yeah, it. and then like. Oh, they got this like I don't know like sixty thousand dollars car, but they don't have money to train jujitsu. Exactly. Or, you know what I mean? Like which is like exactly. twenty four hundred a year, you know, or even That's like true. two thousand a year, or something like that. So it's just all about investing in yourself and invest in the community as well. You know, like I like investing. the idea of guys going out doing it on their own more than I like it being mandated. I still, if it's mandated, I'm still cool with that. Yeah. It's just that I could see when accountants get a hold of stuff. Yep. Them yeah. diluting the blue belt, the, you know, I was, like I was just gonna oh, well, say you that. you did thirty, you yeah. did thirty hours or whatever it is. So I say yeah, you, yeah, you did, belt. yeah, you did two hundred hours of training. Here's your blue belt. Yep. But the guy's not a blue belt. It happened in yeah. in uh, he's just the map in the military yeah. When, yeah. when I went through the the yeah. martial arts instructor course. It was yeah. it was rough, man. The, like the very first day that this guy got his ankle broken, it was mm. it was nasty. And then uh, and then when I went back to to my unit. And I tried to do a course. Someone got hurt, and immediately they were like, "Look, you gotta, you gotta tone this down. You can't have people training this hard." And uh, and they expect you to still give them a belt to progress. Mm -hmm. They're like, "Well, if you're not gonna put the work in, you're not gonna put the effort in. It makes the belt meaningless. It mm -hmm. makes it y useless." Yeah. You know? And I can see that happening once uh yep. once accountants get in involved and the mm -hmm. government gets involved and they start saying everyone has to be a blue belt and then you get the guy who is, he's he's not a blue belt but someone will just give it to him it's like the parent that forced the kids to train jiu -jitsu. yeah you know yeah. the kid is there but they the kid doesn't want to be there yeah yep yeah. You know, or you force your your kid to swim yeah. he's there swimming <laughs> but he doesn't want to be there you know you force your kid to do something you know yep. that's why i never force my daughter to train you Man, know like, now she's training a lot now she's training yeah. a lot she loves it yeah. you know Probably because I never force her, you know, I just, I just like let her train. Like she started training when she was four. Then like at eight, she's like, she's, she decided to stop. Right. She said, dad, I don't want to train anymore. So, okay. She started dancing. She did ballet. She did like piano. She sing, you know, a little bit, you know, like, 
uh, musical classes and stuff. And then when she was 12, she decided to come back. Yeah. You know, I just had a conversation. I saw her training ballet, you know, and um, she trains for 40, 45 minutes, like half an hour was stretching. And I was just like, man, like, this is not helping, like, her, you know? Like, I said, Sarah, like, you become a teenager. I think it's time for you to know how to defend yourself, you know? And then I just asked her, like, I just suggest, you know, I think it would be good for you to train, like, some, some jiu-jitsu, if you want, you know? If you want to keep doing that, I'll, I'll be with you, you know? And she just, like, thought about it. A couple of days later, she's like, okay, I'm back. Yeah, the last, like, okay, like, six know? months, year, yeah. she, I've been, I see her in there, like, No, she's day. improving yeah. a lot, man. Yeah, it's she's totally, always in there. It's cool. Yeah, right now, I'm, like, on Wednesdays, I like to be home and rest, you know? And then uh, she wants to come and train. <laughs> Sometimes I, 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 I got a day that I want to be away a little bit and just have time with my family. And then she's at home, like, oh, Dad, I'm going to train. I'm like, but... I took the time off just to be with you here, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I okay, and then I come to the gym, and then I end up like teaching again. It's addictive. And all yeah, like she she has that, she had that. So I believe that the cops must be the same way. It, it, it cannot be like mandatory, where you know it, it needs to be mandatory, but it's not like forced. You know, yeah, like, you like, like you, you, you need to, to enjoy. You need to, you need I, to enjoy it. I, I think you know? when you're setting up a program for an organization, especially a large organization like a like a large yeah. police department, I think you need to recognize that there's going to be some institutional sort of fallout in the sense that like we have a shooting program and it does not produce you know grandmaster level USPSA shooters. That's not what our shooting program produces. It does produce guys that are more more competent than they were before they ever picked up a handgun. Yeah. But for most like any competitive shooter, even like the lowest level competitive shooter, they never yeah. win anything, they never do very well in the matches, but they go regularly, they're gonna stomp a, a, yeah. a cop in a, in a competition. In a, it's a hard job, man. So you have yeah. to recognize that our shooting program doesn't produce, <laughs> doesn't produce, the, yeah. and, and our grappling program is never gonna produce world champion black belts, mm -hmm. right? Those are, mm -hmm. Those people, that's self-motivation, right? Yeah, that's like an yeah. immense amount of It's an extra. They put an extra amount of training. I mean, yeah. Like, orders of magnitude greater yeah. work to get to, yeah. to you like gotta the level. Study, you got to study. You got to spend time. Yeah. You got to yeah. you you spend time studying. Sure. Learning. You got to have open mind. But I think we would be, just like we don't produce, you know, grandmaster level shooters, but we're still benefited by having some mandatory yeah. shooting shooting that, that pushes us to a, at least a, a, a low bar but at least the bar yeah. same thing like I think we're fixated on like belts right now and belts are really something that you come to a, a, a school and you earn by putting in work at the school but what I really think the, the message is is that a certain level of, of understanding how grappling works mm. would take a lot of those things that we're seeing in the media and and remove them because cops would yeah. be able to control situations yeah. That, that we're watching them not yeah. have control of. Yeah, some so. situations are silly. Fundamentals. It's very silly. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah. For yeah. us, like, who knows yeah. jiu-jitsu? Like, you see, like, like the guy that did the cartwheel, you know? He's he's fighting yeah. the two cops and gets away, and then he does a cartwheel. Oh, really? I didn't see Takes that. running off, oh, you know? Well, the God. one, I mean, the one I think of is where the two the two cops were trying to arrest one guy, and he, yeah. like, the one in, um, was it Atlanta, where he, it, they're, they're the arresting taser him. taser shoot? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, could that that uh, probably whatever it uh, might not have happened given a, a an officers who had been training regularly for a long time. Well, I mean, so know? if if I told you that two of your let's say you got two white belts that have been training for six months, and uh, and you're and those two guys are going to be paired up against a slightly inebriated guy, and their only job is to control him, just hold him down and control yeah, him, yeah. and he managed to like get away from both of them and like disarm them and run. You would be sort of disappointed in your students at that point, right? Yeah, You'd be like, yeah. what, "What? What just happened, guys?" Yeah. So that—that's you know, I mean, it's a difficult job. That was a difficult situation. I feel for those cops, and I—I I feel bad that yeah. that that that, that, out, that outcome happened. But mm -hmm. it could have been avoided, like a lot of other situations could have been avoided, if those guys had had a, a deeper understanding of, of how to control a human yeah. being, which is what grappling is. It's not just like. A Three days seminar or three days class. No, no it's like we said; those are your exactly. tests, and yeah. then yep. you find out what you need to work on, and, and keep three training times towards a week those. At least, yeah, minimum. three times is minimum. is good, and it's hard because you have the job. Yeah. Most people have a family, yeah. you know, so yeah, it, it's yeah. hard to train a lot. But three days is, yeah. I think, ideal, you know, for your, for the guys who have a family. And so a you job guys work uh, how many hours and rest how many hours? 
here is here we do four four, four ten days, hour days 40 hours a week to 40 yeah hour work four week. four ten hour days and then you get three days off and a lot of people will three days go in yeah a lot of people will go in and do overtime on their days off and yeah. stuff like that so yeah you, 10 hours working it's it's a long day yeah some days are maybe longer the, than others. maybe like the training should be a work hour i don't know yeah well like before you work you start training and yeah. then you go work so yeah. in that that marietta where they they do the training i think they get an hour of their um it might be an hour a week but i, I think it's an hour of their work day that they're allowed to go and train and i think their first two Grappling. years yeah i think their first two years they're required to train and then after that it's it's optional mm -hmm. and they said 60 percent of their cops uh, have continued training. Mm. I mean, that's huge. Right? Yeah. Like Sixty percent of them still train after yeah. the required training, that's awesome. and they've had. Uh, I think it's like forty-three percent reduction in injuries from wow. when cops get yeah, into yeah. a fight with someone, yeah. and all of those injuries didn't were were from cops who didn't train. Mm. And uh, I mean, the the training alone, all the impacts and stuff. It, it takes a toll on your body, right? But yeah. you get used to it. Like if I'm on the street and I'm I'm. Uh, dealing with some uncooperative guy and he he uh, he's trying to get away and he elbows me in the chin He's not trying to he's not trying to hit me. You know, he's just trying to get away He elbows uh -huh. me in the chin like it's not gonna bother me. You know, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. it's not gonna put me out of the fight Like I get way worse here you Take <laughs> yeah. a knee, you know, yeah. like when you you shoot in and get you take slammed. a knee to the head yeah. yeah, or you get slammed like that hurts way more that what happens on the street isn't really anything yeah. when it's when it's something like that but you do see a lot of times where a, a guy is a uh, cops fighting with a guy the the guy's trying to get away and the guy will will maybe bump the the cop and the cop will it will have a big swelling cheek mark you know mm -hmm. and it's like it's that's that's just you soft like mm -hmm. the guy didn't try to hit you mm -hmm. you if he had tried to hit you maybe he would have broken your your cheekbone but yeah. that's just you being a soft person you need mm -hmm. you got to get out there and toughen up you know it's good for and you and the to training get hit. helps with that. yeah i mean the tr the training is what does it's it it's like right? when you train boxing and then you're just like in the beginning yeah. they throw punches like yep. yeah you close the eyes yeah but this. eventually you get used eventually to you it. just then, eventually then you start it's, seeing it's like normal it's normal yeah. i always tell so. we get the new guys <laughs> that come and train and they get like the mat burn yeah. You know, when their, their yeah. skin gets cut open or they get the, the, the their fingers get cut open from yeah. holding the gi in their yeah. face. And I always tell them, your skin will toughen up. Yeah. After a while, it won't be a problem. Like, and we I have a term in Brazil for that. What? We have a term. like It, it calls, like, uh, we have casca grossa and casca fina. <laughs> casca grossa means, like, rough skin. And casca fina is just, like, soft. Soft. Little baby. <laughs> yeah. Like so when yeah, you say the guy is casca right? grossa, it means, like, he has tough skin. Like, it means, like, he trains hard. And I train a lot. It's a true, lot. though, right? Like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, it, it, yeah, sure when you started, you got a mat burn sure. and yeah. your your skin yeah. was sore. Your knees were sore. Oh, my and then fingertips were all tore up yeah. from getting from yeah. And now it's not, now it's not an issue. Yeah. Although sometimes, I, like I told Dan that he would, uh, my partner, uh, Dan, who trains yeah, here, yeah, like, yeah. I, I always told him because he would come to work and he'd have bruises all over his legs. <laughs> and I always told him like, ah, that'll go away because I, I don't, I don't bruise when I yeah, train. Maybe, but yeah. I always told him it would go away, but apparently not. It's yeah. been like, it's been like three and a half years. He still bruises. You know? He's like um, a banana. <laughs> right. Uh, so you have a lot of experience. You guys have a lot of experience like right now, uh, training and of course, when Brian's training here, he always thinking about like uh, the life situation, right? Street situation. Yeah. You do like regular jujitsu, but then like the way you play your guard, the way you go for sweep, the way you try to take down, he's always thinking about real life situation. Yeah. So, like, tell us like what is the best guard someone can learn like to come up from the bottom on their back? Somebody is on top. What is the best way to play guard right there? If I'm, you know, if I'm out on the street in in the real world, I like the knee shield, the knee shield, guard. that type of that type of guard, because I can Especially control. The trying to smash yeah, you, I can control the you. distance real easily with that knee shield. I can get up fast if I need you to. Can get the underhook. Yeah, I can get the underhook on my, on the side that my knee shield is up really fast. Which once you get that underhook, you have those the three basic options mm -hmm. you know you could do the, the knee tap or you could roll them around or behind stand you up, or take the lock. back yeah it's a i think for me especially uh if you have weapons yeah. you know if i'm the one with the weapon and i'm mm -hmm. doing the knee shield I, i'm yeah. i'm immediately taking away his option to grab any of those and i don't really need to concern my um a lot of my focus on 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 
worrying about the weapon. I can focus mm-hmm. more on the fight, and I don't need to worry about the, the gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing, especially when you're first fighting with weapons. It's hard to tell yourself it's not about the gun. It's about the fight yeah. and then the gun. And, yeah. and, you know, like you and I have rolled with all the gear on. Yeah, yeah. And you've seen sometimes it's easier just to fight and pretend you don't even have a gun. Yeah, and then eventually, yeah. when you have the guy completely controlled, if for whatever reason you need to, now you can get the weapon out if you needed to. Yeah. But a lot of times, it's just more about getting the control. Uh, this, the situation is like right here, especially here. Uh, you told me that already. Like if somebody is like fighting you, but they're not touching your gun, you don't have like the right to... Yeah, it, shoot, right? yeah. So getting into when you can, it depends. Yeah, yeah. yeah it That's depends. The is the, it's yeah. it's all it's generally like ninety percent of the time. It depends is going to be the answer, and it's such yeah. an awful answer. With, without but, without yeah. getting into so, but if they torture your lot, weapon, like, a lot of people, gotta, a lot a lot yeah. of people, when I go to radio calls and they're dealing with uh, you know an angry family member or a pissed off neighbor or something, and they always want to be like, well, when can I punch him? Or when can I do this? Or when can I do this? And my, my default answer, because it's kind of similar to your question, like when can I, when we do the shoot? Yeah. My, my default answer is if you're really interested in using violence, in it, which I think, I mean, I'm interested in using violence. I've been studying it for years. Yeah. If you're really interested in that, you should go take a community college use of force mm-hmm. uh, class and mm-hmm. learn when you can and can't use oh, okay. use of force. So without yeah. holding a, a community college use of force, class because I'm not qualified to teach that but without teaching that but we, anyone can join this type of class sure yeah, oh, it's just it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a law class That's right good. it would be it would be it would be included in in some other law class but to answer your question you can use deadly force and there's a definition for deadly force but you can use deadly force when you reasonably believe that your life or somebody else's life is in danger mm-hmm. uh, and so, you got to stop the threat in so like, right away touching yeah. Brian's gun doesn't really make me e- you ha- it has to be more than just touching. It's not mm-hmm. like a, it's not like oh tag okay it's yeah, on like yeah, right. It has to be okay. like Brian has to like it's legit- like trying yeah. to pull your gun. <laughs> yeah, out. Brian yeah. has to legitimately believe that I'm about to get that gun out of the holster and kill him with it. And if Brian believes that, then yes, deadly force is authorized. Mm-hmm. But what's what's interesting about all like the, the the jujitsu and like what Brian's talking about the control that 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 gives you is that you almost because you're you're fighting for that position and then you get that dominant position we've removed all that like the the need to worry yeah, about that yeah. because you know i've got you in gift wrap with neon belly like you're definitely not that you're not dangerous to me anymore so we're just gonna sit here until you mm-hmm. get tired or i get friends and we're gonna put you in handcuffs and yeah and it's never gonna make the paper i like the kimura too right kimura yeah. control I'm for handcuffing fan. it's terrific yeah, yeah. Kimura, boom. So i think it's awesome i mean you know, you, you have the option to break them if you mm-hmm. need to, but it's so good for control and it's good for movement. Yeah, you know, you, yeah. you lock that in, you can pull your own body to take the back yeah. and go up, invert, whatever you need to do. It's such a good, good yeah. way to control someone and to yeah. control your own movement. Yeah. Uh, it's hard. Now that I've, I'm a lot more advanced than I once was with the, with jujitsu, I've started rolling more and more with gear on mm-hmm. and it definitely changes. Yeah. It changes how you roll and how you think about it. And like you said, when I roll now, when I'm rolling here, before we start the class, I kind of tell myself, am I doing this class today for sport? Am I doing mm. it for just exercise or am I doing it for, uh, mm-hmm. uh, for work? And then one of those three categories will tell me the types of things that I'm going to allow myself to mm. do during the training. Uh, Some days you bring your, your stuff. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. Brian texts me, hey. I'm going to train. I'll bring my my gear. Okay. I'm like, okay, I will help you. And Man. then we both like just go yeah. after each other. So I had we did I, lots of drills. It's I fun. had a holster like and um, I had a big the the thumb knob. Yep. You know, a lot of people have a yeah. have that big. They got an extender so they can pull their gun out quicker. I had one and uh, we were rolling and I I I was on my back and I leaned over. My elbow hit the knob on on the holster and the gun went flying remember this uh, and, and uh i thought oh god so, uh, so I, I got rid of that thing you know i mean yeah did, I'm, I'm yeah i really? took it off i took oh, it wow. off and i put the lock back on so i can oh, actually wow. i can flip it up and then you won't be able to press the button so if you're pulling the gun out now it's you're basically ripping the holster apart mm. uh it, it's just yes i'm one losing. training session make you decide yeah yeah that one actually the the very next day so because that I was went the first time you used that or no you always had that um I've had it before, but I, I just think I never really 
played any time on my left side. Mm. And uh, I granted, I was rolling with you and Josh, so yeah. it's a lot different than rolling with you know <laughs> some regular flunky on the street. Yeah. But if I can bump it myself and the gun falls out, I am gaining time by having that. Like I can, I can deploy the gun really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't, I don't think that the time I'm gaining by having that is worth the safety that I'm losing if I need to fight or if someone grabs onto me. And it's more likely I fight or grab onto someone than I yeah. need the gun. You know. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you need the gun, the odds that it's going to be a quick draw competition are pretty slim. I mean, yeah. It's possible, but yeah. even if you need the gun, you're probably going to have time mm -hmm. to, to draw it. And yeah. not, it's not going to be. And I like can still draw. You know, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. still draw. We're, just we're as talking fast about that. tenths of a second yeah. difference in the draw, which probably isn't going to. be I like the situationals. Like we put a situationals. Sometimes, like oh, like you say, like one guy, the guy on bottom is with the gun. The guy on top is no gun, have control, and then yeah, yep. we start with we um. Way too, I so think that day I had nice. him grab. I had him like start with his hand on the gun, with his hand off it, with his hand with the gun out of the holster, with it in the holster, halfway in the holster, just trying to. To uh, practice different scenarios, and you you end up dying a lot. I'll say, but yeah, you die a lot. <laughs> yeah. It was fun, but man, he um. So you grabbed. Uh, I just thought it was. It's like this is not fair. Uh, <laughs> I had the gun in the holster, and you grabbed it, and I had to stuff it because it was almost coming out. So I stuff your hand in the holster, and then uh, and then you wrapped my arm like it was a lasso. Yeah. You know, so I had so he he lassoed my arm with it when I was holding my own holster, so I couldn't let go because the gun was gonna come out. But then, uh, but then I can't stop a sweep because you're yeah. lassoing it, and I yeah. just thought like no one in the real world is gonna lasso me when, when I'm holding they do, my gun. Yeah, if, you can if articulate. They do, this is a big problem. Yeah. Yeah. Even people that That's like, awesome. Though. Like for example, uh, in the United States, like you have the right to bear guns, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you have a gun, you also need some to places. be trained. Yeah, some some yeah. states more than others, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you, you got you to gotta, you gotta train as well. Yeah, it's it's just, your, I, I definitely gun, think it's a responsibility, gotta, yeah. right? Very, yeah, I think yeah, it's, it's a, a right to carry a gun. I think if you're going to carry a gun, you have a responsibility to yeah, carry a gun. Yeah. And, and I would never push somebody to carry a gun who doesn't want to, right? If mm -hmm. there's somebody who's like, ah, oh, guns make me nervous, yeah, and I'm yeah, not, yeah. yeah, that's cool, man, then don't carry yeah, one. Do, yeah. do something else. Sure. Go, Guns solve a very narrow spectrum of, of problems. If these are all the problems that I might encounter in the world, guns solve this really narrow spectrum. Mm -hmm. But man, if you need to solve one of these problems and you don't have a gun, you're, there's no there's no solving them. Whereas yeah. like pepper spray and a bright flashlight solve a much wider spectrum of problems, but they won't help you in that narrow spectrum of, of mm -hmm. gun, right? So yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a tool for a very specific job. Mm -hmm. But man, when you need that job. Yeah. There's a lot of different options out there, and sometimes we don't think about the, the why. I, I, I was talking to a guy yesterday about it, and we were talking about our gear setup and uh -huh. you know I, how I just, I just switched that on my holster. A lot of people, they just copy what they see. Mm -hmm. So they see like the duty belt, and um, someone told them this was the best way to do it, and they're like, okay, I'll do that. Or uh, they saw some other guy on Instagram and they had it set up this way. So they're like, oh, that must be the best way to do it. They set it up like that and they never change. They never test the gear out. They never put it through its paces. They just, mm. they copied a picture and that was mm. the end of it. Kind of it looks matters. cool. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. And, <laughs> and I'm not saying you have to overthink everything you do, but uh, there needs to be yeah. a little bit of thought. Like uh, mm. on my, my, um, the, the belt I use for SWAT, I have my pistol mags canted a little bit. It gives me a better uh, angle to grab the mag out, but also underneath the armor. Yeah, okay. it also helps when uh, when we're rolling around. If I'm climbing something or jumping, I don't have any pinching when I turn it that way because I have mm -hmm. the 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 body armor end somewhere near my rib. The the pistol mag is sticking up, so when I move around the old one, it was it was vertical and it would get caught under my armor it would pinch me or something so i i canted them and now i don't have that problem yeah. but it, it it didn't take a whole lot of time to think it's just everything that's on your body or that you carry or you put time into whether it's training training jujitsu training the gun everything requires some amount of thought some more than others but you should have uh, some reason why you're doing yeah, something that's and if role. it's uh i have this because i'm too lazy or cheap to buy anything <laughs> else like i'm okay, okay with that just valid. know that that you made that thought you know i didn't mm -hmm. do it because i i saw this guy do it it looked yeah. pretty cool so uh -huh. i'm gonna do that one uh, you know it's like um, back in the day jujitsu like uh i remember um 
you know, like people used to wear the belt like right in the middle of their butt. <laughs> they didn't be- wear the belt like <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, right in the yeah, belly you button push line. It down. They that they, they used to wear like really low. You know, it was a trending like I would say right like back in the day, and then everybody think that was cool. You know, and I I, I think like Hickson used to wear the belt like this. You know, it was like a uh, surf shorts. You know, people like oh, and then everybody started <laughs> wearing like that. You know. But nowadays, like, no one is doing that anymore. But it's kind of like a trend, you know? Sometimes people are like, oh, that looks cool. So, yeah. Monkey see, monkey yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. monkey yeah. see, monkey You got to have more than that, man. Gotta yeah. have you guys have that? There, there has to be no, some. No, we totally do. It's oh, great. Constantly, but there has, oh, if you can't explain to me why you have a piece of gear on your person, then you shouldn't have that piece of gear. Mm. That doesn't rule out all the so mistakes. So you need to know why you, you, you wear there's it. a lot of cops that have a 10 inch fighting knife, fixed blade fighting knife on their on their belt. And if I ask them why, they have a reason. They'll give me a reason. And the reason will be, well, you know, if I need to retain my gun, I can pull this knife out or mm-hmm. whatever. The problem is, is that none of those guys have ever been in a grappling match with somebody who's put any thought into weapons-based grappling yeah. because they're gonna look at that knife and they're gonna grab the knife and then they're gonna grab your gun and now you can choose which one you want them to have but they're getting one of them, right? Because mm. you can't defend both. Yeah, so yeah. it's not, I don't think it's a good option. I don't carry a big so 10 you don't knife. So you don't carry a knife? I carry a knife, but I don't carry a big 10 inch mm, knife. So mm. I, I think that's, I know other guys that are like, well, I carry a folding knife in my pocket. So okay, yeah. now we don't have the problem of it being obvious and whatever. But have you ever t- taken a folding training knife and tried uh-huh. to access it while... It doesn't yeah. even have to... I mean, the problem is I keep using you and Brian as example, but you guys are like black belts. But even mm-hmm. a, a competent, you know, even me, if I'm going hard at you, good luck getting the folding knife out of your pocket and yeah. unfolding it and then using it. The odds of you doing that are slim, right? Yeah. You, that's not a good solution either. Mm-hmm. So, But all of this, like Brian's saying, all of this comes from experience, from pressure testing your gear. I'm going to go pressure test what I'm doing. It's like... It's like when you, you know, a new technique, you know, wouldn't it be cool if I could do this with the gi or do this kind of lapel choke or this kind of sweep? You got to mm-hmm. go pressure test it against somebody who's really trying to stop you. Yeah. And if you can still do it then, then it's a legit technique, mm-hmm. right? So same yeah, thing yeah. with gear. If you can sure. use it w- under pressure, then it's legit. And if under pressure it folds and crumples and doesn't work, then yeah. you got to change it. needs to work something. in your favor. Yeah, I right. break a lot of gear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's why I come here. Go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't survive a training here, then I'm not yeah. gonna put it on. You know? yeah. It doesn't. It I, doesn't see, I see. Like every time that there is a big event, uh, you guys needs to like protect the event, right? For example, like I saw you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What is the name of this? Like, uh, doing you? the Overwatch stuff. Overwatch. That's what I was doing yeah. there. I'm not on the the sniper team. Hopefully one day, you yeah. know, I, I try a lot. That. Uh, but this a is like something goal. that. Uh, the county has right in every, every um, everywhere well not i mean sure certainly not everywhere but most places are going to have something like that so that's mm. kind of like a venue security aspect and uh some venues are going to have well I, i'd say most are going to have a private component of their security and then they're going to have the um the the professional component like you mean you like let's say a baseball game or a yeah so if game. you have just exam like example yesterday we have the the baseball game the Padres game so the Padres stadium itself is going to have their own security guards walking around doing security guard stuff whatever whatever it is and whatever limited capacity that that um that the baseball organization or the the Mm -hmm. the um, stadium organization allows them to do and then the next step safety yeah the next step outside of that in in the case of of San Diego here is police so you they have a certain number of cops that are roaming around dealing with uh with situations that are beyond the scope of of the unarmed security guy you know mm. hey the security guy they're having a, a person who's drank too much and he's being a jerk and starting mm. to fight with people security goes over there hey sir you need to leave he uh the private he, security first. yeah private security first the guy you know he he tells them to f off or maybe starts fighting with them then the the cops will go in and mm. they'll have to use um a little more encouragement to get him out of the stadium and then uh, in our situation, you you have some people that are that are you know high up or mm-hmm. or in less than visible places, just mm-hmm. watching out, looking for anything bad. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah most cool. places have something like this, mm-hmm. you know, where yeah. you you just have people observing, just looking for something out of the ordinary, you know. Um, How long have you been a SWAT team right now? Uh, three and a half years. Three and a half years. You were around for the. 
Like yes, right sir. after I, I graduate, right? Like three and a half years. Yeah. Something Something like like how long are you there? Yes, like you you joined right now? A month? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just, yeah, uh, our oh, academy graduated uh, on the uh, 11th of, mm. of last month. So, so um, there's a huge difference between uh, military, uh, cops, and SWAT. Right? There's yeah. a huge difference. Yeah, but that's... Yeah. So it's a huge difference. Or it's a huge, huge difference. difference right? And, yeah. you know, if you're going in as a maybe there's a building, there's a, a building with some homeless people that are inside and uh, you need to go inside and clear it. When I'm regular working, when I'm just working patrol and I go in there, it might be me and my partner and one other guy. We're going to go in there and do our best to go through this this uh, this structure and find some some homeless people, whoever there is trespassing. And we think that it's going to be a very low level threat. Whatever, 99% of the time it's a low level threat and it's not mm -hmm. an issue. You shoe them away. Mm -hmm. Then you have the next step up from that. There's a bad guy, you know, they're inside the structure, you know, they have a weapon. That's not something that normal patrol should go to. They don't have the equipment or training necessary to handle that situation. So you're going to need to call the next, uh, the next level of experience and that's going to be your SWAT team and SWAT mm -hmm. team is going to have tools that aren't available to regular patrol to to solve that situation and most of the time when SWAT shows up they don't need to use very much force mm -hmm. just their mere presence of SWAT showing up is is pretty intimidating for a lot of people yeah. and that generally solves a problem on mm -hmm. its own mm -hmm. but one you know beyond that in the civilian world that's it you have nothing further than that. And you, the mission for your law enforcement is stabilize the situation, stop the threat, whatever that means. Hopefully it means them, hey, give up, and the guy just gives up and everyone goes home, no problem. Mm -hmm. In the, the military world, the, the mission is, is much more broad in scope. You know, you might not be surrounding a building hoping someone comes out. You might be going into the building with a... Uh, for a specific reason for a specific person and mm -hmm. that person might not be coming back with you you know yeah, so yeah. the whole mindset is completely different and um i i do see you know, i did the military thing i i do see people who have a hard time switching from the military mind and way of doing things to the law enforcement you gotta change your mind yeah my job in mm -hmm. uh in law enforcement is not to get into a fight with someone it's not to you know, to belittle them, or it's not even to teach them a lesson, right? My job is to stop whatever problems happening and then solve the, the appropriate solution. Maybe it's they go to jail, maybe they get a ticket, or maybe it's, hey man, just go away, stop mm -hmm. this. You mm -hmm. know, my job is, is not to take anything further mm -hmm. by my own hand at least. Yeah. And uh, in the military, it's not always the case, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's two very different missions. Um, I mean, Right now in our country, there's a lot of sort of friction between mm -hmm. what we what we call the general population and the police. But part of the problem with that mindset is is that the police are part of the general population. Yeah, we live here. Mm -hmm. We're part of the yeah. community, right? We're that's so we're supposed to we're supposed to be part of the community. And so th the problem is, is that then people are like, well, you 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 serve me, you work for me, I pay yourself. All right, like let's slow down there. I'm my I, I work for whatever agency I'm representing in this, in, in mine and Brian's case, we, we represent a city, right? So we're here to enforce the rules, hopefully impartially that everyone in the city, because by dint of living here, you've agreed to these rules. So mm. we're all going to play by these rules. And when somebody doesn't play by the rules, it's our job to make sure that they do. Mm -hmm. The military has a very different mission. They don't, they, they generally speaking are not fighting in, in a city that they live in, right? They're, they're going to achieve a, an objective, usually overseas, ideally, right? So, uh, it's a it's a different mindset and it's a different mission and yeah. so i mean there are similarities we draw similarities between the two and 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 there are some there, there are parallels that can be drawn but they're not the same they're not the, yeah. and brian's 100 percent correct you see people transition from military to law enforcement I mean, me and brian both transitioned from military to law enforcement and it's a it's a good that's a good pool of people to draw on for cops mm. among other pools um but some people can't make that switch and some people are still um mm you know, that, that adversarial, you know, yeah. uh, attitude in that. Even, even like you, you got some traumas too, right? Like if you go to like, the, I, I, I met people that had like, 
uh, what do you call like uh, the PS PTSD PTSD yeah. yeah some people have more yeah. issues in life than others for sure right yeah you know I think that's um, a big issue huh? one of the things that you hear about a lot well you, how do you deal with stress? Right? That's yeah. what that's going to come down to. How do you deal with stress and what's the acceptable way, acceptable way to deal with stress? Some people like to tell jokes and laugh and uh, some people <laughs> don't like when you do that. So, yeah. so uh, it's kind of like, how do you emotions? Yeah. How do you people deal have with stress? Different emotions. You know? I, I like to just let it go. Tell a joke, man. It's no big <laughs> deal. Some people don't like that and they yeah. think you don't take it serious, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the things I, I, I hear quite often is the militarization yeah. of police. You know, yeah. you, you hear all mm. of this, like uh, the police are becoming too militaristic or, oh. or stuff like that. Yeah. And um, uh, a lot of it is they'll see a cop with like um, body armor or something like that. And they think that, well, now the, the cop has body armor. He has a big, long rifle. It's scary. Mm -hmm. And it looks like a machine gun and they're going to go in and that's going to make them more aggressive. What these, what these things do, one, a lot of the times we're getting them cheaper if it's a military surplus item. It's yeah. used. We can get them cheaper than if we were buying them new from some, from some store. But uh, with, that, um, with all that, that equipment, it allows us to take our time. We can take, I don't want to say that we're taking more risk, but we can, we can take our time to solve the problem without having to use more force. We, we are certainly taking more risk than a military unit would take. So the problem with that phrase, that, that you know, militarization of the cops, is that people are fixating on the tool. Once again, we're talking about tools, right? So that tool is used by the military, whether it's a gun or armor or vehicle or whatever. Um, it, if you were to militarize the police, the police would change their tactics. Yeah. And the tactics of police and military are very, very, very different. Yeah. And that's what sets them apart, not their tools. Mm -hmm. We're just simply using the best, or hopefully the best equipment that's yeah. available for, for the day, right? And th that just happens to be what's useful. Yeah. That's the modern equivalent of whatever they were using 30 years ago. And, and so people are seeing it and they, they're also seeing the military use mm -hmm. it again because it's a good tool for yeah. for a job and so and but the tactics of how they're used are very very different right mm -hmm. so our 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 rules of engagement if you will are very very different and so when when people say that when they say oh the militarization of the police i i usually stop them and i say are you talking about the equipment that we're using or are you talking about how we're using it because that's tactics and those yeah. two things are very very different and if you're talking about the equipment that, that we're using then it's a foolish argument because it's just a tool right it's just yeah. it's the best tool for the job but if you're talking about our tactics let's have that conversation but usually they're not because mm. they don't either understand our tactics or understand what that yeah. means so that's a different conversation mm. so. so what about when people talk about the fund the police right so there's a lot of funding police right now or you think? some some, <laughs> some places are refunding <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. oh yeah they defunded and then a lot of crime went up Really? Who knows why? Really? And, uh, now they're refunding. So at first they defund and then like, oh, let's change our mind. Yeah. 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 Because I, I feel that the politicians, they need, they need to listen, like the population. But uh, sometimes it's not the majority of the population that wants to have that happening, you know. Yeah. But, well, you hear that a lot, know. right? The majority of people support you. And I would say, well, they weren't out there when I was getting rocks thrown at me. I didn't see the majority mm. of people supporting yeah. me. I yeah. don't feel it. Yeah. So uh, if they are, that that would be nice. Yeah. But I mean, whether so they the support me, to speak up. If yeah, they, if yeah. Really whether harder. they support me or not, if you yeah. call me, I'm still gonna come. And when I show yep. up, you can scream at me and tell me you hate me and I'm a racist and all that. You're gonna rape my kids and stuff, and I will still help you. Yep. Yeah, like it doesn't feel good, but. Yeah. If you call me for help, man, regardless, I'm going to do that my happened best. Before, to, but yeah, it happens oh, many like times, once or twice time. a week. <laughs> once or twice a week. <laughs> like people still call you. The guy. Yeah, they call you. Hey, I need your help. But I they don't say up. thank you. They're they mean to me. They don't, they don't <laughs> and, uh, say thank you. No. No? They're mean yes, to you. And then and you I help try save to help their them. lives. Okay, see you later. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. <laughs> oh, my God. It's okay. You know. Wow. That's the job. Wow. Yeah. It, so there's a people talk about being a, a high responder or a low responder and a high responder is somebody who's always going to going to go towards whatever the trouble is and try and fix it. Mm -hmm. um, and a low responder is somebody who's maybe going to preserve themselves before they think. And and there's nothing wrong with being either one. To be clear, I'm not advocating either either approach. And I think yeah. if you're going to be a high, if you know you're a high responder, you have a, a higher duty to get that training, whether it's medical or whatever, yeah. grappling mm -hmm. so that you can handle those situations. But, um, you know, 
the only award, the only real serious award I've ever gotten from the city, from, from the department, is a life-saving award, and it was for saving a guy who hates the police. He's a gangster. He hates us. We've dealt with him a bunch of times. And it wasn't a conscious decision where I was like, ah, this is a solid dude. This is a good, this guy's really giving back to the community. Uh, I need to I need to save his life because he's a good person. It was a, that dude's dying, and I know how to save him, so I'm going to do it. And I didn't even, it was there wasn't any, like, you know, yeah, of course. The who doesn't matter. Yeah, the who yeah, does not matter. matter. Someone needs help. It, you gotta help. You gotta help. No matter what, the job. doesn't matter. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's it's good. Man. That's that. Like that. That's the mentality. I think of most police officers. Yeah. I think most police officers are gonna show up and do their best. To you know, my my grandfather was a cop. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, no he one. was a cop. Yeah, in Brazil. In Brazil, Did they, was, uh, yeah. uh military. Like uh, we call it like Polícia Militar, which the gray, is like, they wear the gray uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like it's from Sao Paulo state. It was a police from the state. I've and, seen some wild and, videos. And, yeah, and, and my look, and Angelica's grandfather was a captain in the army. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's wild. And a pastor, and then he became a pastor afterwards. Crazy, yeah, huh? He was a captain. A, quite a difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> captain, a pastor. But I believe like the military in Brazil is more chill than the United States. Maybe the military, but I've seen the cops do some, <laughs> yeah, some wild cops, stuff yeah. over like, there. My, like put people in the trunk. Yeah, like, my, hey, we got to take you to jail. Get in the trunk. You know, my, you know? my grandfather, <laughs> yeah. my grandfather was very like, even like Angelica talks about like her uh, grandfather as a, as a captain, right? Like when he was at home, everything needs to be on time. They used to like <laughs> breakfast really early. The lunchtime was really early. 11 a.m. They're already like eating, you know, like it, it was, was the like, one Brazilian guy on time. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he one. was. Yeah, they say he was like really like <laughs> he was like, you know, on time with everything. And uh, uh, and my my grandfather, like um, I remember like he, he passed away right when I was around maybe 14, maybe yeah, 14, 12 years old. But I remember I used to go to his house. I was like always like oh because he was like really like restrict. Strict. Yeah, yeah, strict like bah, you know, like hey don't do it, you know. And then I knew he was a he was a cop. I was just like I had a lot of respect for him, you know. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my daddy tell, uh, told me some stories and stuff, you know. But um, he was already retired, of course, when I when I was born, you know. So he was already retired. But yeah, so um, just by living a little bit with my grandfather you know and and knowing him and respecting the way he was carrying his life with a lot of responsibility even though he was retired already like i always had a lot of respect for for uh people that have like that type of job you know so they well, are i'd say me, so. Uh, i'm sure that some people who like you will not like you that you talk to us but yeah uh, we like, appreciate it you know you know? yeah as i know but um you know it's just like I think it's like it really depends like I, I I talk with a friend and then he's a I love this guy you know and he uh I saw like him like saying things you know about uh, cops like just like threatening and hating and all that when everything was like on the internet yeah. you know with Floyd Lord, uh, Lord, George, Floyd? George Floyd, Floyd <laughs> thing happens right and um it's like talking and I talk to him you know say why is thing like that you know and then we just talk with a lot of respect you know i think and a lot of people yeah, they don't um yeah they just say stuff they don't yeah. think about what they're saying and then and, and then he never and talked and then to he, a cop and, and then he told me like oh you know what happened like the cops killed my best friend you know my best friend died because of a cop and i'm like okay so he had a bad experience you know and if his friend was right or wrong I don't know, you know, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I just know his friend died yeah. by a cop, right? And then because of that, he, he create and built like a, a such a like, I would say hate within his heart against cops. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't mean like that bad cops makes all the cops bad. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And one day, like I was talking with Brian, Brian say, look, you have the cops and you got to think like, there's like, you know, you have what I would say like in everything, anything in life, like you have good engineers, bad engineers, you know, you have good jiu-jitsu fighters, bad jiu-jitsu fighters, you know, uh, cops, that can happen as well. We have good cops and bad cops, you know, yeah. but in which way, with bad skills or bad, intention. or bad intention, you know, like there's, you know, you gotta just, you know, or just having everything. a bad day. But, but we have a good talk and we respect each other a lot. And I love this guy, you know, and, and, 
we talk and it's just like I think like the experiences that you have you know I don't know you know um, I never had uh, I see things sometimes you know but I feel that okay in the same way that you have bad doctors you have bad cops you know like in general it doesn't mean that one thing bad that happens makes everyone bad yeah you know what I mean? yeah because I, I know you you're a black belt you're here every day um, we talk you know we're good friends and we have a great life you know we train and you tell me like what happened at your work you know and I, I see like I see like what happened you know and I, I try to put myself in your in your side you know and also I try to put myself in the side of the victim I say when I yeah, say yeah when I, I see it. something I like when, when I see something bad happens right but uh, you know like Even, even the word of God talks about cops, you know, the authority. Romans 13, Our right? Our chaplains. Romans yeah, like Romans 13 talks about, talks that. about like that. Like you gotta, you gotta respect, you know, and, 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 the, and Romans 13 say that uh, the cops were, were a sword for a reason, you know? <laughs> There's a sword that he carries for a reason. Like translated to nowadays is a gun, right? <laughs> so it's just to make sure everything is under control because bad people exist. Yeah. Right? Like, Uh, like when people say, oh, we don't need cops anymore. I'm like, we don't need an army, for example. Like, how are we going to control the bad things that happen in the world? It's it's weird, you know, for me to yeah. think like that. I, maybe a lot of people will be like, oh, come on, Andre, you know, like uh, I used to like you, but now I don't like you anymore, you know. But I'm just like very transparent here, you know. I respect your opinion, you know, about all that. But I feel that There's both sides always, you know, you got to put yourselves in both situations, like, you know, uh, and it's like, it's weird for me when you, when you, you know, when you see like those type of situations, like, you know, um, I, I, re I have a lot of respect, that's it, you know, and I know that if I can go inside a plane and then travel all over the world, you know, or travel all over the United States to teach seminars, I know like someone is working to make sure everything is is under control you in know the background yeah, yeah exactly like and that's what people don't realize you know there's like terrorists there's like thieves there's like you uh, know there's a lot of there's bad lot stuff of, happening and not a lot right of now gets, right uh, now there's a lot of bad things uh, happening, not a lot so. of it gets told to people yeah you know they so, kind of live with their eyes closed they don't see yeah. all the darkness we all make there, you know? we all make mistakes Right, we all make mistakes. Remember, that's a blessing, know? right? I mean, that's yeah. good. That's good that there are that we live in such a society that yeah. that we that you it's out there that that evil is out there, but it yeah. doesn't touch most people yeah. because somebody's keeping it away. Yeah. But I think yeah. speaking with people, you know, if people could could talk more with the cop, mm -hmm. you know, and and have an understanding of the why, the how, what led up to things, yeah. that helps. But they people need to be willing to actually talk and not not go in there with their their mindset on on uh, whatever their point of view is already like uh, they got to go in there willing to to hear out all the details all the whys and then decide whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. uh, not maybe more people are willing to do that than I think but that situation doesn't happen a lot a lot of people yeah. don't actually hear from the cop like I'm I'm I've been telling people I'm so tired of being told how to fight by people who have never fought, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Like you're telling me how to control the guy with the broken beer when they bottle. Say, oh, shoot, shoot their knee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're telling me sure. how to like handle the bad guy and when you've like, never done like it. And there's like proofs that that works the other way around. Like when you shoot the knee, like it didn't. Um, Good luck. Good yeah. luck hitting the knee. It's, you know? it's, yeah. it's hard, right? Yeah. yeah. And also, yeah. by the way, you hit yeah. somebody people in the don't leg, understand. that's people not a guarantee. Because you watch movies, like you watch movies. For example, back in the day, We used to watch like Bruce Lee movies, you know, and we used to watch Karate Kid. We used to watch like, you know, the fighting scene in moves right now is different because everyone knows what is a fight. Yeah. After yeah, UFC, after <laughs> MMA, everybody knows what is a fight, what is a real fight. Yeah. But back in the day, people thought like fighting is like flying and jump with the, with the, with their feet like on their chest and then spinning kick and then, you know, yeah, and the guy yeah. falls. It changed everything. Watch like a movie from 1980s and watch the fighting scene. It's completely like, you know, 
But nowadays, like, you start seeing, like, people getting guillotines, triangles, arm bars. Yeah. Like, you watch, like, the John Wig yeah. movie, right? Well, it's like, like in, the, it's in stuff. the public mind. Yeah. You know, people yeah. are aware of yeah, it. Yeah, you know, like. It's so, the same thing with the shooting so, stuff, Yeah, it's right? the same thing yeah. with the shooting scenes, you know. We like, used to see watch... guys shooting with their arms yeah. extended, and now we're seeing yeah. people yeah. using. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, back in the day, the same way. Tow, tow. Remember the yeah. song of the gun? Tow, tow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I used to watch a lot of, uh, not like. What is the name of that guy with the mustache? It was a cop. I always like he made a movie like about like being a cop. Like I forgot his name, man. Uh, Charles Bronson. You remember Charles Bronson? Say, yeah. Charles yes, Bronson. Yes, I thought sure. you were gonna say Chuck Norris. No, 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 no. No, Charles Bronson. You know, I, I love like I, I when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of Charles Bronson. Like you know, big guy like yeah. tow, tow, You know, he's got pachow, pachow. <laughs> it's pretty full, pretty fun. But um, uh, I feel like. You know, with the with the shooting scene, people watch movies and stuff, and then they see like, oh, the shooting the knee solve in that movie. You know, they think or shooting the elbow, shoot movies. the gun shoot out of his hand. Shoot, yeah, <laughs> yeah, shoot it, shoot on the on the knife. You yeah. know, like in the movies, yes, it, it works because you can do whatever you want. People's but, mind is a movie. You know, when they see this yeah, stuff, that yeah. is their only frame of reference. Yeah, so they're like, like, oh well, why didn't they do yeah, this? Yeah, it, it's hard. You know, like because. Uh, I can put myself on that side as well and kind of like understand because you never be in such a situation, you know. It's like when you fight and then you 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 lose and then somebody who never trains, never fought, come to you and say, "Why didn't you do this?" Yeah, you know, you should yeah. done that. Yeah, why? And I'm you? like, why didn't you win? Yeah, why, <laughs> man? You should grab him and just do this. You should like, win more. I'm like, man, yeah. you never Stop fought. Losing. You yeah. don't know. Well, you know, you don't know like what's happening. So. It's just all about education. Well, right? you know, there's, be well there's like responsibility so. we talked about yeah. with the gun. It's your If you're going to carry a gun, it's your responsibility to train and learn how to use the gun. Yeah. You know, that's that's definitely something I believe in, you believe in. Yeah. But if you're going to be in this world with the cops and all this stuff and you want cops to be better trained, which I think they should, it is me me as a cop. It's my responsibility to be able to, to shoot effectively, hold someone down effectively, yeah. communicate effectively without yeah. having to escalate things and turn it into a fight. I wanna avoid the fight before the fight. Sure. But it's your responsibility to learn how all of that works, learn the options that are available, yeah. and take responsibility for your own actions. All of these bad things that yeah. we see in the news wouldn't have happened if when the cop said, hey, stop, and the guy stopped, that would have been the end of it. Yeah. I. I yeah, sometimes I can't think of a video. Person start walking towards. Yeah, I can't I'm think like, of a video in the last oh, year crazy. or two years or for a while where um where the cops said, "Hey, stop doing that," and the guy stopped, and then there was a bad outcome. You know, when a cop says, "Don't do this," at least in California, it is your duty to do what that cop said. Mm -hmm. You have an obligation legally to submit to what I'm saying. I say, yeah. put your hands in the air, turn away, face away from me. It is your obligation to do that. It's your yeah. duty to yeah. you know take a little responsibility and do that. If you do that, nothing bad is gonna happen to you. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna let anyone else hurt you. I wouldn't let, uh, you know, if you got the, the crazy cop that yeah. everyone thinks is out there, I wouldn't let him hurt you. I would stop yeah, that yeah, guy. Of course. As yeah. long as you're doing what you're told to do, yeah. as long as you're holding up your side of the obligation, I yeah. will make sure nothing bad happens to you and I'll do yeah. everything I can to take care of you. I'll get you the water, everything I can. Yeah. But you have to you have to hold up your side of this bargain. You gotta mm -hmm. you gotta fulfill your obligation to submit to to that situation. And if you feel like you you're being unfairly arrested, you feel like you're being unfairly treated, you you submit to what we say, get your hand put your hands behind your back. We put you in handcuffs, put you in the car. You go through the process. At the end of it, you file the complaint, and uh, and at least in San Diego, it will get investigated. So, so that's thoroughly. the thing that people don't see is is mm -hmm. there's a, there's a process for when this is done, and and a, a, something I hear a lot of people say is you, you might be able to beat the rap, but you can't beat the ride. And what they mean is is that you might win in court, but you're still going to go to jail. Mm -hmm. right? So you're going to go spend a night in jail, and then you can make your case in court about why you weren't guilty of the crime, and then you'll win. And so, so that's what that means. It, so there's a time and a place to argue, and on the side of the road with the cop is not the time and the place to argue. Um, and I'm not saying there aren't cops that abuse their power, because I'm sure there are, but the number of cops that abuse their power i mean it's minuscule it's yeah. it's it's a percentage of a percentage it's yeah. so small um 
so most of these problems, this is what Brian is talking about, is is when it's time to 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 comply with whatever situation you got yourself into, yeah. uh, it's time to it's time to, to play by the rules, play by yeah. the rules, and and we're not going to see these terrible yeah, like outcomes. Sometimes, for example, like um, I was I was driving fast, and then the cop stopped me, you know, and then he gave me a ticket, right? <laughs> and I was just like, okay, so I was wrong, right? I was wrong, so he gave me a ticket. But sometimes people get mad because they get ticket, but they are wrong because they're in high speed limit, like over the speed limit. So I'm, I remember when the cop saw me and then he came like, hey, sir, he started talking to me. I'm like, I'm sorry. I know I was like, speed limit was like above like 65 on the freeway. I'm so sorry. And then he, he was waiting for me to argue with him. And he kind of like, you know, I didn't argue. He's like, do whatever you need to do. I'm wrong, you know? And he just looked at me and then, okay. And then, two, done. I'm like, okay. I wouldn't say you. admit you're wrong. You know? <laughs> you know? What's, um, so, we went to a class and uh, it's like the instructor, um, tra- Travis? Yeah, Travis. Like, yeah, he he said something about uh, being um, compliant but not cooperative. Yeah. And I went, right? Yeah. That, I yeah. thought that was awesome. So I'm going to be polite to you. I'm going to be respectful. I don't want to escalate a situation, yeah. but I'm also not going to cooperate. I'm not going to tell you I was speeding. You know, that's yeah. uh, that's your job to prove I was speeding. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to do polite. your job for you, <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, yeah. but I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to yeah, be a jerk, you know but I will. Yeah. I, Look, I, check I, this I'm out. Check this out. I'm not going to give a, you the win. Check this <laughs> out. I have a student and uh, this is a funny story. I have a student, he, uh, he uh, got a ticket because of the speed limit speed limit ticket and then he didn't have a driver license big problem right so now he needs to get his driver license so he needs to go to the court in sacramento you know because the dmv but he doesn't he live here no he, he lives here huh. but like and then he drove to sacramento to solve his problem when he got there he paid the ticket and everything and they like How'd you get here? Like <laughs> driving another ticket. <laughs> Imagine it's a carpet. Like, man, why did you? I drive? floated here. <laughs> you, why did you drive with? You know, but he went there to solve his driving license problem as well. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, oh my god, these guys are crazy. But you know, uh, sometimes happens, and he wasn't with bad intentions, but. You, you know, know we use like, the term responsibility yeah, a lot. Like you have the responsibility for this. Yeah. So, like, I'm sure you've seen it. You've been instructing for a long time. I'm sure you've seen students blame everything but themselves for their lack of success, right? I'm, yeah. I'm not successful because that guy is too good or that guy was cheating or mm, my gi wasn't comfortable or I was born with, you know, whatever. Oh, poor me. I have asthma or I have short arms yeah. or, or, or whatever, right? Mm. And so... Uh, over the years, as I've done, as I've trained in different disciplines and stuff, and I, the people that I admire and the people that I'm drawn to are people that, that take responsibility. And so whatever it is, maybe I do have short arms, maybe I do have asthma, maybe I do have whatever disability, instead of using that as a reason to not train, to not get better, they overcome that, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's the same thing. I mean, maybe that cop was being unfair, maybe it was, but take responsibility for what your part of it was. Yeah. Were you speeding? Did you not have a driver's license? Like yeah. that, we we live here in this country, in this in this in this state, in this city. Mm-hmm. The rules are you have to have a driver's license yeah. if you're gonna drive. It's the same rule for everybody. It's yeah. not like some people don't have to have one. So why are you driving with that one if you know that's yeah. the rule? Why are you you know simple stuff? Why are you why are you why are you violating those yeah. rules? And if you do and you get caught. Just own it. Yeah. Yep. That was that was another situation. Situation. I came from Brazil. I have my driver license from Brazil. I have a Brazilian passport with me. And I was driving a car from my friend, uh, a friend's car. And then, um, you know, like when the lights start, like the lights is out. You know, like, and mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. red. Yep. And then you need to stop. Wait. You know, like yeah. it's like a stop yeah. sign. Then. Yep. But I just came from Brazil. I didn't know that. I was driving in America. Like I didn't know. Like when the the lights are flashing yeah, in Brazil. To... If the lights red, you still go anyway. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But what happened? Like, I, I I didn't stop. I slowed down and I passed really carefully, you know. <laughs> and then right away, like, <laughs> you know, <woo. laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, oh shoot, you know. He stopped, and then I'm like, I, he's like, hey, you know, like you're passing the red light, like the lights are flashing, so you need to stop and wait for people. I'm like. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. So here's my documents. He's like, oh, 
are you from here? I'm like, no, I'm from Brazil. I just got here. This is my driver license from Brazil, just my passport. You know, I have a friend's car and all that. And then the cop was just like, look at me. It was raining, I remember. He looked at me and then he's just like, okay, you can go. You know, <laughs> like he kind of like understood, you know. But imagine like if I stop and then he come to me, I'm like, hey, ah, I start like, ah, you know. So things could uh, yeah. could escalate, you know. Yeah. I just like, oh, I say the truth. You know, I just got here. I didn't know all that, you know. I'm so sorry. Um, and in Brazil, we don't have that. Like where the lights like, yeah. you know, we don't have that. So, and then he kind of understood and just, okay. You well, know, for two so, sides, you were so, calm. He was calm, right? You yeah. should be calm. You shouldn't but be But he'll wear me. He's like, hey, he next time, you know. <laughs> like, and then here's so. a, a, to add to it. Let's say he let you go, right? It, it's going to be recorded. He stopped you. He lets yeah. you go and uh, you don't have a license. And then he, and then you crash into mm, a, mm. a family or something. Yeah, yeah. Now they're going to be like, well, why'd you let him go? And wow. so I, I see that a lot. Um, so he should little, give me a ticket. In that no, situation. no, no you were good because you, you had a, yeah. a Brazilian. I, 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 you were here visiting. Uh, uh, okay, I'm not saying you should have. Just like, like, but he could a little running down the the rabbit hole. Like, if you go back to the Georgia thing with yeah. the two cops and they fought the guy, he pulled the taser on him. Yeah, that started with the guy was drunk in his vehicle in a driveway, uh, in a drive through, right? And um, and then they try to arrest him for the the driving driving drunk, and the whole fight happened. People were saying. Well, why didn't they just let him go home? Why didn't they just take him home? Or why didn't they just call a cab mm-hmm. for him? Let's say they call a cab and he uh, he gets in the cab, he goes, goes into another car and then drives away in a different car, you mm-hmm. know, or s- something like this. Or they just tell him, hey, just sleep it off. Yeah. And he parks the car and he sleeps in his car. He wakes up. He's still drunk and drives away. Now that those those cops will be held accountable for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. And I mean, at least here, if if you do that and uh, and the, and the there's wrong a people outcome. who find out about it that's wow. the end of your job wow. that's yeah. why like we don't let yeah. when i can't if you're drunk and i stop you i can't let you go not because i think uh you know i want to hammer you i want to take you because like, you gotta I think about doing, what's gonna yeah happen. i hate doing duis it's too much paperwork i think it's a waste of my time i hate doing it but like if i stop you and you're drunk I'm going to follow the the procedure and the process all the way through because I'm not going to lose my job because mm-hmm. you wanted to drive drunk and you mm-hmm. live two minutes away and I could yeah. just walk you home. So, I, you so that goes back to like the society. So we live in a society and we've all, we've chosen to prioritize certain things. So uh, we, 20 years ago, a cop it finds you with marijuana and that's a felony arrest, right? And yeah. today it's completely legal because as a society, we have adjusted and we've said, okay, look, this is ridiculous. We're not making marijuana mm-hmm. a, a, you know, a, a crime anymore. We're going to legalize it, at least in California. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we have rules and we've agreed on them as a society. So as a society, we have decided that driving drunk, driving, driving under the influence of alcohol is against the rules. And in yeah. fact, we've made rules specifically that say, please do not have the the discretion yeah. to say, hey, you, you were driving drunk, but we're going to give you a break on this one. We don't have the discretion. If you run a stop sign, I have the discretion to give you a break. Yeah. All right. I can say, hey, yeah. don't run a stop sign again. I'm not going to give you a ticket or mm-hmm. I can give you a ticket. Right. Mm-hmm. I have that, that discretion. I don't have that discretion with a, with a, with a DUI mm-hmm. because our society has said this is important. We want these people yeah. to not be on the yeah. street because it results in a lot of deaths. Right. Yeah. So, um, Again, we have those. We have these rules. If if there, if you think there's something that you don't like about how the police are interacting, yeah. think about if there's a law that you could remove. Generally, people want to add laws, but think about if you want to remove it. Because the thing that people don't really think about is that every law that is passed comes with with a with a potential death sentence yeah. attached to it. Mm-hmm. Because if I'm gonna be required to enforce it, and you want to resist me, then there's going to be a physical confrontation and that mm. that can potentially end in your in your death. So yeah. um, if if you think that that's ridiculous, then remove that law. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's just let people drive drunk. There yeah. will be other consequences to that, sure. right? There are, there are other consequences to I mean, alcohol used to be illegal, right? And then and now obviously it's a huge part of our culture. There were consequences to making alcohol legal in our culture. There were negative consequences to making, mm-hmm. right? There still are. Alcohol, alcoholism is a huge problem in our in our country. A lot of the calls that we go to have some sort of nexus with alcohol, right? Yeah. Yes, it's a domestic violence, but both parties were drinking. Drunk right? people are the worst. Yeah, drunk people are the worst. I don't sure. like to work overtime at events mm-hmm. where there's a lot of drinking because I right. know it's going to be nothing but trouble. Drunk people 
cause trouble. Yeah. I guarantee you that if anyone listening to this right now thinks back to the dumbest thing they've done or the thing they're mm-hmm. the most embarrassed about, yeah. mm-hmm. I bet there's some mm-hmm. alcohol involved. I bet you got too drunk and said something you wish you hadn't said or did something you wish you hadn't done, right? So, um, it, 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 I'm not saying make alcohol illegal. I like to drink. I'm 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 a fan. But what I'm saying is is that there are consequences yeah. to making things legal or illegal. Yeah. And our job isn't to make up the rules on the side of the road. Our job is to enforce whatever the rules currently are. All right. right? So. Okay. All right. This is this is it. So I think, man, it's amazing. We got a lot of information, and we can do more. Let's yeah, do more and, more and more and more. It's a lot less. Uh, a we lot, have a class that's about to start cool. in like a lot less serious minutes. than last time. You know, I try to be a little more loose. But sure. next time, I was thinking maybe we do a. You, you were talking about videos the you know you see cops doing something yeah, yeah of course it could be fun oh breakdowns yeah if it could be fun you let's do you breakdowns. show it to let's us it. and we'll tell yeah. you what we think that could be fun maybe yeah like let's it. do it's it let's really do it cool. and you know like i'm releasing a new platform we are releasing a new platform atos bjj on demand and um i want to add like uh, self-defense courses um with brian and you know with essa too you know so we can talk more about that and you guys gonna be a vi- uh gonna be able to download and purchase the courses you know with all you guys with all your experience like you guys sharing uh to everyone right so i think it's important and we are here to just clarify things and and help the community you know so um, i have my perspective you know um, the way i see things you guys have your way to see things because you guys are out there all every single day so hopefully you guys enjoy the the podcast and i see you next time thank you brian you, thank you Essa. Thank awesome. you. thanks for Take having care, me guys